In the last video, we talked about pulse rate modulation. In this video, what we're going to do, we're going to use the built-in feature, uh, PWM feature in uh, 18F1220, the PIC Micro. Um, and we're going to kind of put it in a code form so we can kind of see what, what, is it, what does it take um, code-wise to use, to use the PWM that is built into the system to generate one uh, such that we could control the percent duty cycle um, in turn which, which directly relates to the power delivered to whatever it is we are delivering the power to. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take a look at um, um, this device uh, or the code that we have to write. Um, and it's a lot of this uh, for, for folks who've been working with uh, PIC 18F1220 or PIC Micro, some of these would be pretty straightforward. This part of the code is simply a setup of the code, um, include, including all the constants. And here is when the reset happens, we'll jump to this location, which simply takes us, the reset will take us to here. So that's the reset code. And looking at this code, we notice at the very top of the code, uh, high priority, location 00A tells us high priority, and it looked like the high priority code is executed here. So the interrupts end up coming to this point, and then the reset ends up going down there. Okay, so that now let's go to take a look at some initialization activity we gotta do. Um, this code is specifically written to run on uh, Edbot, which is a robot uh, we are working with. <clears throat> and, and for most part, uh, port A and port B are configured to match that, uh, what the inputs and outputs are on that robot. And there's nothing new in here. We're just simply uh, setting the direction for the inputs and outputs. And then, and then I'm going to skip this portion that this configures the timer. Uh, and then I'll come back to it. But let's go set up a PWM. So in order to set up PWM, there's five steps you got to go through. This, there is, there's not a lot of logic to it other than following the instruction from the data sheet of the PIC Micro Designer. And it starts at the page 131 of the uh, technical document if you want to go through it. But here we're trying to reduce it into uh, translate what they need you to do into a bunch of code that, that you can see. So there are five steps here. Step one uh, is uh, the, the PWM, even though there's only one PWM, you can deliver it onto multiple pins uh, coming out of the um, PIC Micro. In this case, we are designing it to come out of pin 18, the, pul the, p p the pulse width modulation to come out of that pin by setting 0, 0, 0, 0C into CCP1 con, that's a SFR register in there, okay? Step two, in, in order to use PWM, you, the, the timer two has to be enabled and dedicated to PWM because PWM internal hardware in the uh, PIC Micro uses timer two to make things work. So you have to clear timer two, you have to enable, uh, set the prescale. Well, these prescales we're going to talk about in, in, a, in a minute. This prescale, we're really going to, there's, there's an equation. Let's jump ahead to step three. There's an equation here, and this equation basically defines the PWM period. So in this case, we are putting the prescale um, for timer two to four, which that is the number that is going to come here and it's going to be plugged in for this okay and then and this equation is not some that equation is based on the design of the circuit so it's always going to be there and then the other register that plays a role is the um, pr2 uh, which is going to be should have been this actually should be here where we set the pr2 to 99 so as you can see, PR2 value comes in here, uh, four times TOS. In this case, we're using the internal oscillator at the default setting, which is uh, 32 microsecond. And then the uh, prescale of four comes in here. 
And if you multiply all of these out, it will give you the period for this uh, clock. Okay, and uh, and so that's uh, that's uh, how it is. And I don't know where we are setting this value, but this is roughly 51 millisecond. Okay, and then and then this this registers, and this is gets a little bit messy. Uh, but the value that is in bit 4 and bit 5 of the CCP1 con plus all of register CCP1L, so eight, 10 bits, 2 bits from here and 8 bits from here combined to give you a 10-bit quantity which is used multiplied by TOS, the oscillator time, times the, the timer 2, Prescale, which was a four timer oscillator, is 32, and all of that get multiplied, and that will give us the um, will give us how the on time. So, for example, if you put a 10 in CCPR1L, um, it will give you 10 percent. It's kind of nice the way it worked out, uh, but you can change these numbers and get a totally different number. But the equations you have to remember are the equations that are listed here. Okay. Um, so, so what have we done here? So, so what we've done here is we have uh, PWM coming out of P1A pin, which is pin 18. And what it's going to do is going to give us a pulse where the period is always going to be 30, uh, 51 millisecond. And we can use the CCP R1L to control the adjustment in here. So whatever number you put in there is going to be the percent duty cycle, if you if you want to think about it that way. All right. So um, the, there is, um, and then and then we clear the bit three. That's that's the bit which is the P1A bit. That's the pin 18. And then we sit in this loop. As you notice in this loop, this is the main loop where all the non-interrupt related code is executed. So really nothing happens. You just sit in here. And the PWM is already set, so it's going to start when pin 18, P1A, you're going to see this roll out. So if you leave it alone, you're going to get a pulse width modulation. And since it was put on 10%, it's going to continuously do 10% and get that out. But now let's go back to something that I skipped, which was there was a timer being set up in here. And let's see how that timer is being used. So if you look at here, this is another example of a timer. We will put, fifth, and it's the timer 1 that is being used here. So if you look at the timer 1, a T1 con is being set to 58, which is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And if you go back and look at the T1 con spec, this thing is, is it not to be confused, this is still a 16-bit. Timer 1 is always 16-bit. But the reading is 8 by 8 bit first and the second bit if you ever need to read the timer uh, count. Uh, oscillator clock set uh, that use the internal oscillator 1 to 2. The prescale is set to 2. The uh, clock is enabled and uh, again we are using internal clock. So now we've enabled the timer 1 and it's ticking away. Um, not the best way to do it. Usually you want to enable the timer at the end. Um, right here uh, at the end of this thing so um, we'll see and then uh, and then we come to the next step and we want to know when the next interrupt happens what we want we want every two seconds to get an interrupt which means we got to figure out how many ticks that is and all of that and here it goes through the process first thing we need to do we got to set the duration of the tick up here we said the prescale was two so the prescale falls in as 2. So we are using the internal clock oscillator. So we are using 32 seconds multiplied by 4. So the duration of each tick is 256. We want to wait 2 seconds. So we say 2 million milliseconds divided by 256, which got 7811. And a hex equivalent of 7811 is 1E88. 1E83, sorry. And then, so now the question is, what would I put in the timer one low and high? It would be basically the value of one zero 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 hex minus that because we want to count up 
the timer, whatever you put in the timer, is going to count up until it gets to 10000, and then it's going to interrupt. So we just want to know how many ticks to have until we get there. And that's just basically this value that we need to count, which is 1E83. So simply subtract it. So this is the value we're going to put in here. And that uh, the low part goes to the low and the high byte goes to the high. Uh, timer 1 high. And then now we're going to turn the timer on and there we go. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that this piece is setting up the timer and let it run. And since it's going to tick 7811 at 256 microsecond, that's two seconds later, we're going to get an interrupt. We don't know what we are doing in an interrupt yet. We just know that we got an interrupt. We still don't even know whether it's a high priority, low interrupt or low priority interrupt. We just know it's timer one is going to do an interrupt. And all the interrupt stuff happens down here. And uh, if you look at it, it says, okay, uh, timer one is enabled, interrupts enabled. Timer one priority is set to high. Um, and, and these three, you always have to do them to enable um, the interrupt. So any kind of interrupt can happen. So uh, we, we all might as well do all three of them this way. You don't have to pick and choose which one you're doing. So at this point, what we have done, we've set the timer. This, this is set the timer to interrupt. So we're going to get a high priority interrupt every two seconds so as you recall this was the five step of setting the pwm and if you recall we set the pwm to 10 percent so the pin is doing 10 percent and we are sitting in this loop doing whatever else we want to do uh, but that pin is pulse width modulation at 10 percent Two seconds later, we're going to get a high priority interrupt, which puts us right here. And the first thing you do when you get an interrupt, you'll make sure to check to see if that was the interrupt you got. And if it's not, just come back and that is not nothing to do with you. So come back. If it is that we're going to try to handle the timer interrupt, which is we're going to branch over here. We're going to turn the timer off right here, BCF timer off. And then we're going to check, we're going to check, are we at 30%? If we are at 30%, we skip and change it to 10%. If we are not in 10, 30%, then we must be in the 10%. So we jump and do the 30%. Okay, so all this interrupt is doing is every two seconds is moving to 10% uh, PWM and 10% to, uh, ten, and then two seconds later, go back to 30 and back and forth. So if you were connecting this pin to a motor, you will see the motor speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down every two seconds. And then, of course, when you're done with everything, you always have to do a little cleanup before you come back out of the um, interrupt. First thing you got to do, you got to make sure you set timer one low and high. So next time you have 7,800 and 7,800 and whatever. So it's two seconds before you get an interrupt. Then you have to clear the interrupt flag. So there's could you catch another interrupt. Then you have to set the timer on. So start ticking away. And last but not least, you got to return from interrupt. Uh, so you can get back to whatever code you were executing. Okay. So in, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, uh, this uh, this piece of code we have basically sets it to 10% duty cycle or 10% uh, first and then it comes every and then two seconds later it'll come back and set it to 30% duty cycle that's all this code will do and every two seconds it flips back and forth between these two options. But the more important thing this code does for you, it kind of gives you a sense of how to write the code to use the timer, use the built-in PWM to control the levels of power delivered to something over a certain interval of time. In this particular case, the interval was two seconds. We're using timer one to do that. And our power levels were set to 10% uh, and 30%. Now, if you want to do more, of course, you you can change this piece of code here and have as many decisions or as many activities as you want to have right 
in this uh, interrupt. So when I interrupt happens, you could step it up, step it down, whatever it is that you need to do at that point. That brings us to the end of our review of a using built-in PWM feature uh, to control power delivered to this pin uh, P, uh, P1A, pin 18, or RB3, whichever you want to call it. And, uh, and the nice thing is once the hardware is set to deliver that PWM, you really don't have to look for it or wait for it until you want to change it to some other level.